Hi, my name is Jillian Seely and I'm a hairdresser. I've been a hairdresser for over 20 years and I'm going to talk today about aging hair, thinning hair, um, give you some information and what to look for, how to help it. And I know that it's overwhelming. I know it's embarrassing. Every time a client sits down in my chair and wants to talk about it, they get a little bit uncomfortable, but you know what? My hair has changed too. Starting in your late thirties, like everything else, you're going to start noticing probably that your hair is not feeling the same as it used to. Your follicle changes, the dimension and the diameter of each hair strand gets a little bit thinner. There is a lot of different things that you can do and I'm going to try to tell you how to do it more organically, naturally. Unless you have a thyroid problem, which would be much more severe hair loss, then you'd have to go and see a doctor and get the thyroid levels. And a lot of times the good news is once that balances out, the hair does come back. Um, there's many different reasons that you lose hair and it could be from hormonal, menopause, aging, rapid weight loss, stressful situations, stresses like does everything to us including help us lose our hair, and giving birth to a child which would also be the same as getting a surgery, something traumatic to your body. So you're going to start noticing your hair is changing and you're losing your hair about six weeks to three months after the fact of that happening. And usually when you give birth to a child, you're going to notice the first year around your hairline that your hair is going to start changing and all these new moms start panicking. What should I do? What can I do? It will grow back. It just is going to take a minute and sometimes up to two years to get the hair back to where it felt before you had the baby. And I also believe that if you start taking care of yourself with supplements and eating well, like I said, rapid weight loss is a way a lot of people start to lose weight as well. A lot of our bodies start losing iron and it starts losing more vitamin B. So those are two things that really help the hair grow back and they come stronger, the shaft is stronger. And the number one way, believe it or not, that women do have hair loss is when their hair is wet, they've just washed it, they're going on the shower and they're ripping through their hair with a brush or a comb. Because once you pull the follicle out by the bulb, sometimes it doesn't grow back. So that is like the number one way you lose hair. So my suggestion is brush your hair before you shampoo it so it's not tangly and it's not like a matted mess from the gym and it's been up in a bun for the whole day or two. Um, brush it through, shampoo, condition it, and then towel dry your hair and start at the bottom with a wide tooth comb or a really nice brush. My favorite brush is a Mason Pearson. Even though they are a bit pricey, you could get the baby smallest size, which is like a hundred dollar investment, but those brushes will last a lifetime and they can brush out any, any tangle in your hair. I used to drive a convertible and keep the baby one in my glove box and my hair would be like on the road for an hour or two and I would brush it out super easy. But remember, always start at the bottom to brush your hair out. Uh, there is a lot of different ways that they're advertising all over the place what to do for thinning hair. So here are some things. They have a laser cap. Now the laser cap is not, doesn't need to really be FDA approved so they don't know long-term effects on it, but people have a high result on it. And I know it takes three to four months of wearing the cap with a laser that is supposed to stimulate the follicle and help stimulate growth. So there's an option. The second option is they have lots and lots of supplements out there and there are new ones coming out every day. I started taking one called Vitafol and it's I have to take four capsules a day so I will get back to you and let you know if I feel like there has been a result. They have gummy bear forms of other supplements. Um, I reviewed the best one, that one seemed best suited for me. So I'm gonna see if it works. I'm hoping it will because my hairline did used to be down here and it's, it's, it's getting thinner up here. So the first thing you don't want to do is run to the store in a panic and buy something with minoxidil in it because once you start using it, which it is proven in women to be an effective source of uh, hair growth and to help the hair become thicker, you have to stick with it. You have to keep using it. You have to keep using the, the product because once you stop, you could use lose more hair than when you began. And so that, that always caution to the wind, don't just run out because you know, you're like, my hair is falling out. You should have 50 to 100 hair falling out per day. That's pretty normal. Um, this Another thing that I've looked into is PRP, which is they take your blood and you can get this done at a doctor's office. I know some plastic surgeons do it as well. They take, a nurse could do it. Take the platelets out, they spit it and they put the good platelets and inject them in your hair 
for hair stimulation and growth. This is a newer procedure. I had a client do it. Um, they started this winter. It's this June now, and it seems like the hair is a little bit thicker, but I know you have to do it in a series. And we have all seen all over men getting hair transplants, and the male hair transplant has been amazing. I mean, uh, famous athletes that were bald now have a thick head of hair. And as a woman, I'm like, why can't we get you know hair transplant? Why aren't they showing women? The fact is, men have male pattern balding, which is right here or right here. Women, we have. Our thinning is different, and only 3% to maybe 5% of women could get a hair transplant. Women thin evenly all over. So the men are thin here and here, and the donor sites where the transplant is back in here and on the side. For women, since it's all even, if you took something to a donor site and put it here, you could lose more hair. So that is really not our option, and most doctors that are willing to do it, investigate it, make sure that you are a candidate because you don't want to end up with a disaster. Because I know how it, I mean, you think I have beautiful, gorgeous hair, but I do know how it feels to notice that your hair is thinning, and I have so much compassion and care about women and their hair because it is such a, such a major thing in our life. It can really make you look younger or older. It can change your whole attitude. I understand. So this is why I'm doing this video. So the transplants, not such a great idea for women. We're talking supplements, which I think could be an option. Medication, thyroid, go to the doctor and check that. Uh, the thermal laser cap and eating a healthy, well-balanced diet. So. Basically, I think we covered everything in the small video that could help you understand more about hair thinning. I'm gonna be keep continually doing research on it and try to find the best thing for me and for you so everybody has beautiful, healthy hair. And if not, I'm gonna teach you some tricks how to make your hair appear that is a little bit thicker than it, than it actually is. So stay tuned. <laughs>